Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to Church of Making Your Day. My beautiful wife, Natasha, again. We just did, uh, what, number 17, right? Mm -hmm. And it was so short and sweet, it was like not worth putting everything up, <laughs> right? So right now, I, you know, I told you I have the shingles, right? Suffering. And Job, the book of Job of suffering, right, comes to me. So I want to do just one chapter. Um, the book, uh, and let's open up in prayer, Father. Thank you for this time that we come before you. We praise you. We love you. Open up your word to our minds and our spirits. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. There was a man in the land of Uz. I just wonder if the Wizard of Oz came from that, right? Hey, whose name was Job, J-O-B, like Job. And that, that man, now this is God's view, okay? 99% of the book of Job is man's view. And the men that are talking in the book of Job are not even Israelites. They're friends of Job. Because a lot of times there's stuff in the Bible and it's, oh, well, God said it. No, God didn't say it. The men said it. Yes, it's in the Word of God, but it's, that's not God's opinion, okay? Very important to realize that. A lot of preachers preach on these idiots that preach in the book of Job, right? That's not it. And he was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. He hated evil. In other words, he was a type of Christ. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. Not 700 sheep. He had 7,000 sheep. So he, I don't think he's going to be starving soon or going without clothing, right? Lots of wool. And 3,000 camels. What are camels? They're mules. They're, um, they're, you know, for the carts and that, right? For pulling carts, working. And 500 yoke of oxen. What's a yoke of oxen? A yoke is two. So instead of 500, he had 1,000 oxen, right? And 500 she-asses and a very, very great household so that this man was the greatest of all men of the East. Why was he the greatest man of all the East? Because God loved him. Why did God love him? Because he eschewed evil. He hated evil. He loved God. He was perfect in God's sight. How many people you know perfect in God's sight? I don't know any. Maybe Arnold Murray. <laughs> Maybe Dennis Murray, right? <clears throat> okay. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day. So they probably went, there were 10 of them, right? And they'd feast at one son's place one time, one son's place the other time, keeping that party going, right? <laughs> Eat, drink, and be merry. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And most likely they're bringing their friends or, you know, husband, wife, whatever, right? Having a good time. And it was so <clears throat> when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them. And he rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For God said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job do continually. Righteous man, looking out for everybody, the household. Now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan, the um, Antichrist angel, came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? What's up? 
Then Satan answered, the Lord said, from going to and fro in the earth. This is before he was bound in heaven. Remember Christ said, get the hand, get behind me, Satan. Satan's behind Jesus right now, bound in spiritual change, uh, chains by Michael, the archangel. But he was able to cruise the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? You know, God's kind of like this. Right, Mr. Cool, Job, perfect in his ways, right? That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and an upright man. One that feareth God. <laughs> and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear you for not, for nothing? I mean, look at him, set up. You got him so set up. What's, why would he, why would there be a problem? Why wouldn't he praise you? Right? Hast not thou made a hedge about him? You've built a wall around this guy. And about his house. And about all that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. See, to Satan, that's a pro big problem, right? Job and God got no problem with it. Satan's got a major problem with it. But put thine hand. <laughs> Maybe we should do it later. <laughs> we'll keep going, right? <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Let's get serious now. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon him, so only upon himself, put not thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Here comes Satan. <laughs> yeah, let's rock and roll. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain thy servants with the edge of the sword. And I'm the only one that escaped alone to tell thee. Bummer. Bad day. While he was yet speaking, <laughs> right? Here comes more. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the 7,000 sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, three different, you know, legion sections of, of, of soldiers, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them all away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. One more time, this one's the biggie. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were partying again, eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house 
and it fell upon the, all of them. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. And fell upon the young men, and they are all dead. Think about it, right? This isn't a fairy tale. This isn't a little Sunday school story. This is real. And I only escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and what? Rent his mantle, right? Like Djokovic did the other day, <laughs> ripping his shirt off, right? <laughs> then Job rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. How do you do that? And said, naked came I out of my mother's. <laughs> naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God. There's got to be something else. God doesn't hate Job. Job loves God and God loves Job. Something's wrong, right? Houston, we have a problem, right? There's somebody else involved here. Job isn't sure who it is. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From go the usual, right? Lurking for victims from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his own life. Right? It's all about me. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils kind of like shingles from the whole, but not, I don't have it this bad, right? But the same idea. Boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. I mean, he couldn't walk on the soles of his foot. He had boils, bloody, oozing boils all over his body. I'm starting to feel better already. <laughs> I don't have those. <laughs> And he took a piece of pottery, a pot shirt, to scrape himself. If I had one, I'd use it. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife, one verse from his wife, one verse from Mama. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain? Thine integrity, 
curse God and die, man. Curse God, you know, look what you've done. You know, she bare the 10 children, right? And they're all dead, right? She's very heavily involved in this and she don't get it. But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak. What, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did Job not sin. And now we get into, let's see, uh, 3 to 38 is about 35 um, chapters of BS from Job's friends and their opinions about why Job was struck. Nobody ever said one word about Satan. Nobody knows about Satan. But obviously Job did something really, really bad, really, really evil for all this to fall on him, right? Uh, Job was perfect. Job was awesome, right? That's why from this part of Job on, you can read it all you want, it's interesting, but it's all the opinion of men. What kind of men? They weren't even Israelites. They were heathen men, right? So anyway, it's still good. The whole, the whole book is great. But I just wanted to go that far because it's like, it's pretty easy to praise the Lord and hallelujah and everything's peachy king and wonderful, right? When everything's wonderful with you. But how about when the chips fall, right? How about when you got problems? How about when you got major problems, right? Where are you gonna stand? With God, that's really all it's worth. Anybody can be a fair weather friend, a good time Charlie, right? What about when the rubber hits the road? What about when you are down and out day after day, week after, okay, I'm ready for this to end and it ain't ending, right? What do you do? You curse God, you give up on God, or do you say, yea, though you slay me, still will I follow? That's what you got to say. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Better you. cut it. I'm going to cry again. Beautiful book. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you.